Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Free Utilism Overhaul. In this video we are going to begin by sending an in situ resource utilization unit, an ISRU unit or a drilling unit, uh, to the surface of the moon to drill for resources and we're going to land it as close as possible to the other drilling unit that we already have there so that they can use simple logistics uh, to transfer resources. But after that we are going to add to our Mars ship currently under construction in low earth orbit and my intention is to add a habitat section to that but we'll have to see how that works out. So first of all this ISR unit using the hydrogen oxygen stage that we have here throttle is up, ASAS is on, we can get the smart ASS system ready to go perhaps but I'll turn it off for now. Okay ignition and launch and I'm just using the same setup that we had on the previous launch of this. I didn't change anything, so hopefully everything will work out and I didn't forget anything important. Ascent from Boca Chica looking good. Okay, rolling, shutting off some engines. Okay, getting ready for a shutdown. And shutdown. Alright, that's 4000 and separation. And switch. We're not gonna follow the space plane. Uh, I mean, the carrier plane down this time. Fairings off. Uh, control from the right location. Okay, prograde RCS on. And ignition. Okay. Well, I don't really want prograde. Prograde. So let's see. Um, Let's go back to this mode. Okay, and shut down. 267 by 243. We're a little bit under the delta V we need to actually get to the moon, but we'll finish it off with the lander. Hopefully the lander is going to have enough for everything. We will find out. I'm just using the same setup. Hopefully there are no complications. But of course, doing a targeted landing like this might be more difficult. Well, we will worry about the periapsis at the end. We'll have to wait the orbit. This, I know, does not have the MLI layers, so... Well, hopefully it'll be alright. Um, we have a nuclear reactor on board. A small one. A modest nuclear reactor. Hopefully that will be fine. That's a lot of oil off though. <laughs> uh, generally large stages do not have MLI layers, but uh, we don't have comms right now. Should be able to pick that thing up, hopefully. Oh, we've got it now. Uh, we can probably go. Delaying this node is actually not a big problem. Okay, ignition. The RCS is turning way too slowly. Okay, that's the end of that stage. That left us with less than I wanted, but okay. Separation. And we don't really care about this anymore. We could probably use the RCS to bring it down if we had a control core on it, but we don't. Okay, that should be fine. We do have a burn time. The question is whether we can do it in time with these engines. Let me just ignite now. Does Smart ASS have a problem with this? Probably need to upgrade the RCS on this thing. That's basically the idea. Okay, kill rotation. Ah, no, stop. Let's have stop, stop. Kill rotation. Oh, that's G, not H. Okay, we've got the gear down now. And... Well, we have an approach to the moon. The question is whether it's good for reaching our target location. I guess we'll try a polar orbit. <laughs> um, a little bit unusual, but maybe it's the best way to hit our target. 
Okay, let's see. Well, we've got eight hours here until the node. Let's see how far it gets. See, but the fact that it wobbles is very off-putting. We are losing delta V here. We did have MLI layers on here. It's there. Well, I guess we should extend a radiator. Okay, we are going to attempt this node. Okay, well, we'll see what the situation is when we get there. Continuing. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. And let's check the situation with regard to our landing site. Oh, it's past. It's already gone past where I plotted there. So we're going to have to tilt more. And since we just entered ESY, hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay, let's try that much. We have eight more ignitions on the engines. Okay, and then if we capture like that, what does it look like? I don't know if that's enough lead time for it, but... We've basically got 2,200 for landing, which is tight, but certainly doable. It's gonna take me a time warp. So I checked the difficulty menu for ways of stopping it from doing that. Let me check here. I mean, the battery and supply doesn't... It isn't actually dealing with that particular incoherent behavior warning. Because when I turned those off in the difficulty menu, that didn't cover it. So... I don't know. We're going to have some things with Kerbalism today. And one of those things is going to be radiation. And the shielding for our habitat on the Mars vessel. But we'll discuss that in the VAB once we get to it. So for now we have a direct line back. But eventually we'll sort of go over the horizon here. And I don't think we have any satellites that would be able to help when we do. Well, I mean, it looks like we'll have comms for the duration here. Okay, ignition. Well, setting the fuel down and ignition. Well, we seem to be in line with that ISR unit pretty well right now. So, the correction on entering the SOI worked pretty well for us. We'll have to see if we can get it done. Okay, I don't want the periapsis any lower than that, so we'll take that for now. And well, let's try and make for a landing here. We will get the landing guidance as a reference. I want to set that as a target. Okay. As far as comms are concerned, uh, that side is always facing the Earth. That is one reason we landed there, so... That should be okay. Just gonna use some RCS to bring the orbit down a bit. Okay, well, we have our little blue spot there indicating where we would land. And then where we're intending on landing. Let's see. And ignition. Okay, now it's a little bit wobblier. In this mode, it seems to be wobblier. Well, I'm um, just gonna try kill rotation. It basically doesn't like the engines at full thrust for some reason. Anything less than that, it seems okay. No, oh, there it is right there. Still more oxygen than hydrogen for some reason. 
even though the hydrogen should have been boiling off more. This was not an efficient approach to that target right now. We just needed a render range of the other one. I'm just gonna stop it right there. And we are going to suicide burn this thing. Or as close to suicide burning this thing as I care to do. Okay. Selling the fuel down. Ignition. Oh, that doesn't look flat at all, does it? <laughs> Maybe it's just the camera angle. One kilometer it seems. The distance to the target. Okay. Ah, uh, it's wiggly. Okay, just the right amount of thrust so that we can keep going down without shutting off the engine. Okay, we are down. And RCS off. And we are in range of the other one. Let's see about this uh, request resource. Uh, toggle plug. Well, doesn't seem to do anything right now. Untoggle plug. Request resources. Well, let's switch to the other one. Plugged in. This thing has resources. We should probably get it doing the oxygen. Not, not oxygen. Blocks. Okay. So... Okay. Now it can, this one can pick up the oxygen. We can see the oxygen going up in the other one. And this one can grab the hydrogen and oxygen from the other one and load it in here. Request resources. There we go. We just grabbed it from the other drilling unit. So that works in theory. So yeah, we can do the simple logistics thing. So another lander could come and see all the resources. This should just be plugged in then and grab the stuff. Maybe we should unplug them when there's nothing here to use the resources just in case that causes a problem. But let's get this thing started on the drilling. I don't know though, this doesn't seem to be replenishing ore. Are we like outside the ore zone if we're just one kilometer away? Doesn't seem right. This one is consuming ore. Let's see, or is this one doing all the stuff in this one? I don't know, this is a little bit confusing. Let me toggle plug again. Now we're plugged in. Oh, this one produces double the amount of, see, when I toggle the plug, this only produces 0.08 per second of the oxygen. When I plug in, it, does 0.16. Uh, so I think it's consuming the stuff from here. I'll go plug. But then why is, okay, let me just start. Okay, well, maybe there is some complication here. I've got this on the hydrogen, but hydrogen is not being made there or here for that matter. So these, we'll just turn the plugs off, and we're we will get the converters off. So no converter on here, no converter on here. But this one still doesn't seem to be replenishing ore at all. Here we have some ore production, but we need to time warp in order to see how much. So at 10x time warp, we have 0 0.04. Okay, well. Let's say I turn these drills off.
it's still 0.04. So those drills weren't adding anything to this one. Um, I'm going to go to the tracking station and come back to see if these drills are can actually drill for or not. Sometimes when two objects with the same module are close to each other, like RCS modules, uh, they don't work immediately. Then you have to go to the tracking station and come back to them to make sure they work. Nope, these drills are definitely not getting ore over here. The likelihood that this is outside the ore zone seems unlikely. I mean, it's right next to the other thing. But having those other drills run does not improve our ore production. It seems. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. This is replenishing oxygen just because of the balance of the other one. It's not actually converting anything. It's just because we're plugged in and so the resources will balance out over time. Yeah, I don't know if this system is going to work out like this. It seems like we have a quirk here. Well, I'll examine that issue later. For now, we'll leave this be. We can at least land the stuff close to each other. The question is whether we can get it to work or not. So, with that being the case, I'll set this aside for now and we are going to turn to the next thing. Okay, so here is the habitat that we are going to be adding to our Mars ship. It is a scaled down version of the habitat from a NASA proposal for a nuclear thermal propulsion uh, ship. And so it is scaled down because otherwise it wouldn't fit in the fairing. It was originally supposed to be the same diameter as the SLS tanks, I think, and using the same sort of tooling to build those, so about 8.4 meters in diameter kind of thing. And we have had to scale it down so that it will fit onto this stage, which is the reusable methane oxygen stage that we have been using. Uh, but it is full featured. In fact, I've put wood paneling in. Uh, we've got plants because plants uh, actually add to the comfort level in Kerbalism. Uh, they're just static, they're not interactable or anything. Uh, but they are actually in sort of an aquaponics system sort of idea and we're launching in this direction uh, It's actually upside down physically because what's going to happen is we're going to spin the ship for artificial gravity So the top ends up being down. They'll be sitting down in this direction So we have the ISS computers. I got the Colbert from the ISS model uh, uh, from NASA and so it is an actual treadmill and Therefore, we have the treadmill bonus to comfort levels. See? See? Um, uh, we have the ability to communicate back. Uh, those uh, computers are from the ISS, but they're awful small. I guess they're all laptop screens or something. Uh, but because yeah, you can see the chairs that are big, those are realistic human sized chairs and the treadmill size. But anyway, uh, these here, uh, that these are sleeping berths, and they basically act like crew cabins, uh, regular ones. So they have the the crew hatch and they'll just go inside and then there's also an airlock on this 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 wood area is actually a, a double doored airlock so the door that uh, faces the interior opens when that one is closed and then they shift they change when the airlock is cycled there is also a uh, top hatch here that can be opened and so there we go open though it, it clips those aquaponics things so that's not great so we'll try not to open it too often <laughs> but uh, yeah and then there's the service module at the bottom solar panels comms RCS for docking and docking ports on both sides so yes we have all the things we've got solar panels on the side as well to supplement the ones at the bottom here because it will need a lot of power especially around Mars and originally the habitat had two floors, but because this is scaled down, I decided that it really could only accommodate one floor. And so it's just a common area, sort of like Skylab in a way, uh, fairly large. I think it's the same diameter as Skylab, incidentally. So, yep, uh, but Skylab did not have wood paneling. <laughs> anyway, that was a little conceit of mine. That was actually based on, I had made, turned this into a pizza, pizza shop, basically. And that, that was a whole other story. Anyway, so we are going to try to launch this in its scaled down version. The question is shielding, right? The shielding for radiation that we get with Kerbalism. Yes, we have good, 
comfort levels, enough for a duration of two years and 282 days. Some of that they should be on the surface, so hopefully it's not the whole way, but that's enough to cover a Mars trip in theory. Uh, though it's weird that it's so close to that. I mean, the, it, how how good do I have to make a habitat for it to work for further locations? I have no idea. It's a good thing that we're just headed to Mars, isn't it? Uh, well, it's supposed to be to Mars and beyond, so I don't know if we can get beyond like this, because this is about as ideal as it's going to get. We have plenty of volume. Um, I don't know how it's reading the volume per capita, though. I, I set the volume up for this, um, but it's reading the volume differently. It definitely does not have that much volume. Um, so I don't know why it has the volume like that. I'll have to check the configuration there. But right now we're more concerned about the surface number, because the surface number is what determines the shielding amount. And yeah, the fact that we have extra volume certainly doesn't hurt things right now, I think. Uh, but Radiation, it says nominal, but if you can see interplanetary, it's only got one year and 329 days. One year and 329 days, which is too little if we are just going to have them in this habitat for the entire time for a Mars trip. In theory, they're going to be going down to the surface, but then if this can't handle the radiation for them, will it be good? Well, I mean, in theory, it'll be good enough because on the surface they should have longer duration. I don't know if the surface of Mars is the same as what it says surface here, 57 years. But as long as we have them on the surface, it'll be okay, I think. But I don't. I still don't like it. I would like the interplanetary to cover potentially the entire trip, two years and 270 days. And yeah, how are we going to get that? Well, let's see what happens if we increase the shielding, right? Uh, we've got the shielding option here. In fact, the sleeping berths themselves have a shielding option too. Uh, they each have a bit of shielding that can be done. But uh, basically it's cumulative on the vessel. Basically it just adds up all the possible shielding and the given shielding. It doesn't really take each portion separately as far as I can tell. I'm not sure. If it does, then we could add them here. But I'll show you what happens with that. And it's a little bit weird. So what we want to do is pay attention to the 1, 000, uh, sorry, 12,200 tons that we have here to see how much the shielding adds. Uh, this thing, um, boy, that wet mass really makes me worried. <laughs> uh, why is it in gigagrams? Um, hold on. Ah, uh, no, that's not what I wanted to have happen. But now it says wet 205.6 tons. I don't know why it got gigagrams, but okay, 205.6 tons, that's if we put all the shielding, I presume. It's not really got a dry mass of 11 tons. Let's, uh, we've got the shielding off. Now it's reading a totally different mass. So I'm confused, there are issues here. Okay, now it's 13,471, okay. Let's take the hab off and see how much the hab actually weighs right now. Um, it's 19 tons. So 19 tons, and then we add a little bit of shielding. So without the shielding, it's one year, 329 days. Here we've added uh, one level of shielding that adds 18 tons to it. So basically doubles its mass. And how much extra time you get? Uh, about 50 days, something like that. About 50-ish days. That doesn't seem like a whole lot. We just doubled the shielding on this, doubled the mass of it. And then the next level of shielding, we end up adding another 19 tons. So now the thing is triple its original mass, or about 57 tons. And here we only get two years and 94 days. So it's only like 50 days extra. That's a lot of extra mass if we're only going to get... That means they'd be all right with just... I mean, it's just better to have none then. If we put all the shielding, you can see our mass has gone up quite a lot. Basically, nearly 200 tons. Nearly 200 tons of lead shielding. And that gets us 4 years and 178 days. So, I don't know what to do about this. Half shielding, half shielding only gets us 2 years and 336 days. This will be enough uh, for a Mars mission. 
but that involves adding nearly a hundred tons. This will be a hundred ton thing. Now NASA's mission definitely did not expect that. Theirs was larger than this, their habitat. It was 8.4 meters in diameter and they were expecting about 40 tons. So that was what NASA was expecting the habitat to be. So this seems a little bit off and troublesome. So for now I'm going to add some shielding. I will. Uh, but we'll add uh, this, uh, let's see, I think we'll add this much, just uh, one-tenth of the total. And I don't know if it's got to be, uh, let's see what happens with these little berths. Now, it reads that the berths are much smaller volume as well as surface area, though I don't think that's correct because, boy, that's a tiny volume compared to the surface area, so each berth has that much. But let's see what happens if I add a little bit of shielding. Well, that's four tons of shielding, just that one little bit. Oh, 3.6, let's say. Now, it doesn't even add it to all of them. It does add it to, oh, there's this. No, that's the habitat itself. I'm trying to click through everything here. It adds it to the mirrored one. So there's two habitats there. They're basically getting two tons of shielding a piece. And that doesn't do anything else. See, let me turn it off. We get two years and 26 days. We add two tons of shielding to each of those. And we get about 10 extra days. And we can max it out. Then we would really have a lot of shielding. But it doesn't really reflect on that estimate over there. I'll add some shielding to them. Just 10% of shielding to each of these sleeping berths. I don't know if you like sleeping in ledge shielded sleeping berths, but... Anyway, so that's my issue with the radiation situation. And I don't know what to make of it. We'll think about that. that. Basically, we should just test it out, do a mission, and see how bad things get, right? <laughs> I guess. We'll see if we bake our Kerbals or not. All right, let's take this outside and get it launched. Well, as we phase with the target, we once again have to account for the fact that we are going to be going to a heading of 75 degrees initially. Well, I guess that'll do. Okay, so we will see how much this is going to weigh in orbit. And that's an important part of this. Then we can plan out the rest of the ship because, of course, this is a critical component. We also need to bring up some more food, water, and oxygen into it. And we will actually load that food, water, and oxygen in. You'll see, we'll have pizzas. So, <laughs> SAS on, uh, throttle is up. Ig oh, that's a lot of things happening, isn't it? Okay. Ignition. And launch. Off we go again. All right, passing through max Q. Everything looking good. We're basically on the nose as far as inclination is concerned. It's a shame that we can't add shielding after the fact. Maybe I could come up with a way of doing that, but... Okay, getting ready for shutdown, and shutdown. Alright, that was a little bit more abrupt than I would like, but okay, fairings. Fairings. Ooh. Well, it was really tight in there. Okay, control from here, and... Okay, we continue. I may have aimed a little bit too low as far as pitch is concerned initially. We're definitely carrying as much as this can carry, so I couldn't add more shielding to this. It has some built-in food, water, and oxygen in the service module there, but a lot of it is just going to be brought in in packages, if you will. We might install an oven. We will see. 
we might need a separate uh, supply module though. It depends on how much we can actually pack in the space hub. Yeah, I'm not sure this stage is going to be able to make an orbit. And, well, we'll just leave it suborbital. It's sort of designed for that anyway. Uh, we'll try and get the HAB to make the, to complete orbit on its own. The nice thing about the stage is it's already oriented in the correct way, but we'll reserve some RCS fuel here for it. Just a little bit. Okay. All right, well, let's just get this pushed off here. Uh-oh. Well, we've got... Got NTO, but not MMH? What? No! We're missing half the propellant. <laughs> it's 44 tons, by the way, so... Yeah, that's too much for this stage. We might want to cut down on... Let's say the shielding on those little habitat things. The little thingamajigs, the sleeping berths. Yeah, we'll have to cut down the shielding for the sleeping berths. But somehow we have the NTO for the RCS thrusters, but not the MMH. I have no idea. I must have just accidentally misclicked something. So, okay. Well, we're just going to have to revert this. And we will do it again. Okay, well, sorry for the repeat, but here we go again. Okay, here we go again. Why do we have waste and waste water in here? I'm so confused by this thing sometimes. Okay, we don't need the waste and waste water, thank you. Okay, now we're clear of all that. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Whoa, whoa, SAS is not doing enough SAS things. Yep, the game's trying to mess with me here. Okay, we should certainly should be through max Q by now. And the relative inclination is getting better by the second. Okay, shutting engines down. Oop, that's more engines than I wanted to shut down. <laughs> uh, I accidentally pressed 8 and 9. Fat fingered situation here. I was only supposed to press 8, but pressed 8 and 9 simultaneously. Not what I wanted. Okay, shut down. Up a little bit too far there. All right, separation. Fairings, fairings. Control from here. Uh, sorry, carry plane, we booped you with the fairing there. And... Ignition. All right. Well, we certainly have enough now. We lightened up the load in a few ways. We took off the shielding from the sleeping berths and we also managed to remove the waste and waste water that wasn't even supposed to be in there. Okay, we have passed Florida and we are close to making orbit here. We will have enough with this stage this time. I underestimated how much we were carrying last time. Which is weird considering we didn't even have the MMH, but Anyway, hopefully that's enough MMH and NTO to finish the rendezvous afterwards, uh, or at least do the docking. We'll probably have this do some of the work. Its engines have enough ignitions. Well, let's keep it low for now. Both of those out, and see how we might... Ah, it's behind us. That's annoying. Just gonna use two of these engines for further burns for now. We've got nitrogen leak leakage at quite a high rate. I thought that had been fixed, but we seem to be consuming a lot of nitrogen. I'll have to check those numbers again. I remember that being an issue, but I thought they had fixed that. And this time we will deliver the payload without needing to use much of the payload's fuel, just enough for docking. Okay, we are approaching the target, and we'll still use this stage to get rid of the relative velocity. And ignition. And so, um, this should be fine. Decouple. And then this can 
point retrograde. That, it sort of knocked the other thing. Other thing, we need you to make sure you're controlling from here. You have RCS. Uh, let us make sure that that is unlocked. Okay. Okay, well, this can deorbit now. It has 537 meters per second all on its own, so definitely no problem, but we'll do it. And there we go. Okay, so that's off and away. Oh, shoot. Somehow I put the upper RCS ports in mirror symmetry instead of uh, four-way symmetry. Well, this is not good. Hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, hopefully we're doing a good enough job of lining up in case we get the communication loss here. We really probably should have some like struts here. If we gotta rotate it for artificial gravity or some, you know, trusses to make it longer. Otherwise, we're not going to get much artificial gravity if we're just using these tanks and no trusses in between. We want the weight as a counterweight on the opposite side of a bunch of trusses if we're going to do artificial gravity, but we'll think about that later. We'll just create a basic system minus the artificial gravity component for now. Uh, that doesn't seem very lined up, is it? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. All right. They were supposed to be the same size because, but because things have been resized to fit the fairings, they're no longer the same size. I mean, the service module sections. Okay. Well, anyway, they are connected. There's a 70 ton thing in orbit right now and we are recharging and we are going to have to bring crew up here to see what works and what doesn't as far as that's concerned. Radiation, pressurization, how happy they are with the the room available you know all that business put crew in the sleeping berths and yep we'll see all that in the next video so anyway it is under construction and we will continue to put it together in the following episodes so with that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time